Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. So on my Instagram, I posted this list of my top 10 cheap deals in the entire NHL, basically going through guys making between 750,000 to $2 million that are non ELCs and non goalies because a decent amount of goalies are getting paid absolutely nothing, but going through some of the best deals. And it kind of got me thinking next season, who are the most cost efficient players, just point blank period in the entire NHL relative to their cap hit next season, who makes the least amount of money? Or not, not the least amount of who makes not that much next season. This isn't the top 10 best contracts. Best contracts factor in term. This is just for next season because, for example, a guy like Leon Dreisaitl only has one year left, wasn't on my top 10 best contracts list. He's going to be pretty high on this list. And when looking at a guy like Austin Matthews, who's making $13.25 million, I think he's a top six player in the NHL. He's not close to making this top 10 list considering next season he is the highest paid player in the NHL by a decent margin. So we're going to dive into it. We're going to start with number one and work our way down. And and this is going to include ELCs, and that's kind of a giveaway for the first guy on this list. Because I don't have Connor McDavid, number one. I have Connor Bedard. Connor Bedard is making $950,000 next season, still on the sec entering the second year of his ELC. And when you look at him, 61 points in 68 games this season with Philip Kershev, and I don't even know who was his other winger, just not good options. He still put up that much production. I think on an actual playoff level team, decent team, he would have been easily point per game last year. I think he's going to take another step this year, and even on a bad Chicago Black. Blackhawks team be around 90 points if he was on an actual competitive team be probably 100 points so the fact that he makes $950,000 and I think he's already a nine maybe even 10 million dollar player makes him next season the most cost efficient player in the entire NHL I'm not saying I would trade Connor Bedard for Connor McDavid tomorrow actually maybe I would I don't know but that's not that different video but next season I think I would rather have Bedard in 11.55 million dollars of cap space than say Connor McDavid and in these hyper I'm saying like you knew before the season who like you could spend the money appropriately. Obviously, right now, if you had eleven point five five million dollars, you're going to have a tough time spending that officially. But next up, Connor McDavid, twelve point five million dollars. Yes, he's still number two, despite making twelve point five million dollars, which makes him the third highest paid player in the NHL. But when looking at him, when he is healthy, when he is fully cooking, when he doesn't have a slow start relative to his standards, I think we can consistently ask for a hundred or can consistently expect one hundred forty ish points every single year around 50 goals 90 assists from a guy like Connor McDavid he is so leaps and bounds ahead of even a Nathan McKinnon in my opinion that I think at 12.5 million dollars considering he does it in the regular season as well as the postseason won the goddamn consummate even though he lost so I think Connor McDavid at 12.5 is still an absolute steal number three I'm gonna go with Leon Dreisaitl you could put Leon Dreisaitl ahead of Connor McDavid I would definitely understand where you're coming from Leon Dreisaitl this year did have a bit of a down year offensively, only 106 points. And this is the final year of his $8.5 million contract. So Oilers fans soak it in before he gets like $13.5 million. But yeah, he's a legit... 15, 16, maybe even $17 million player when he is fully on. So the fact you're getting that at only $8.5 million, which is like, okay, first line money nowadays, and you're getting a legit top five player in the NHL. Amazing contract by the Edmonton Oilers. Next up, I am sticking with the Edmonton Oilers. This one's also going to be controversial, but Evan Bouchard has one year left at $3.9 million. Yes, $3.9 million. And if you're not that high on Evan Bouchard, even if you think that he's just a very good offensive top pair guy and you don't think he's a top 10 defenseman like I do, even if you're in that other camp, he's still like an eight to nine million, like an eight million ish guy. If you think that he's just a point per game, not that maybe not that good defensively, maybe benefits a little bit. He's still eight ish million dollars. I think he's a top 10 defenseman and top 10 defenseman. Uh, Bouchard's probably going to get 9.5, 10 million. He, he's in the same tier as Erasmus Dahlin, who got like $11 million. So considering he's making $3.9 million next season, he is one of the most cost efficient players in the entire NHL point blank period for next year. Number five, we go back to the more established guys. Nikita Kucherov's only making $9.5 million next year. Do I think he's going to have 144 points, get 100 assists? Probably not, but I think we can assume he's probably going to be around 110 to 130 points. And at $9.5 million, that's good. For, that's like elite first liner money. And he is a legit top six player in the entire NHL. He can really drive his own line to being one of the best lines in the NHL. I know he's Braden Point, but on top of that, the power play, the Tampa Bay power play kind of runs through him. And it was by far the best in the entire NHL. Nikita Kucherov is like a one-man offense. So to have him at $9.5 million, it is an utter 
steal. Number six, Kale McCarr at $9 million. Yes, you could maybe switch McCarr and Kucherov, but McCarr did have a bit of a down year last year. I think he is going to bounce back. He still had 90 points, but defensively, he was not nearly as good. And when looking at Kale McCarr, I think he's going to get back on track and yet again be a $14, $15 million defenseman for the Colorado Avalanche and reassert himself as the consensus. Well, he kind of is still the consensus number one guy, but no doubt, no Quinn Hughes discussion, no Adam Fox discussion. He is still the best. And in 2022, 2023, the seasons that he had were so insane. 2023, even he missed 22 games and still was a Norris finalist. Probably shouldn't have been, but he's still amazing analytically. When looking at Kale McCarr, he checks in at number six. Number seven, we are going back to the ELC route. We are going with Wyatt Johnson. Johnston making 895 four thousand dollars when looking at him last year 32 goals 33 assists 65 points as well as being arguably the star's best forward in the playoffs he was worth 7.5 probably like eight million dollars roughly and he he did all that production especially in the regular season while being like the third line center and not and not having top power play time if he actually got more exposure he probably would have went for like 75 80 points i think he's gonna go for 75 80 points this season considering the fact some of the departures with the dallas stars when looking he might even be on that top line full-time instead of Joe Pavelski. So when looking at Wyatt Johnston, you're getting him for sub $1 million. And I think the expectations should be between like 75 to 85 points this year. That is a legit eight to $9 million player that you are getting for basically like a 10th of that price. It is an absolute steal for the Dallas Stars and they better lock him up now on some kind of eight-year deal instead of bridge him and then eventually have to give him this mega, mega deal. But next up is Jack Hughes at $8 million. Jack Hughes, I've said it before nonstop. I think he's going to be massive this year. I had him at 109 points. And my points prediction, even last year, still 74 points, 62 games, 98 in 78 back in 2023. So when looking at Jack Hughes, you're getting a franchise easy top 10 center, could be top five this season at $8 million. It is amazing value. Next up, Quinn Hughes, 7.875. I think Jack and Quinn are like, I think they were like number 12 and 13 on my top uh, 50. So it's very close. And especially considering Quinn is a, just a, like 125 K less, you can make an argument that Quinn should be ahead of Jack, but still Quinn is fantastic for under $8 million to get a guy that just won the North trophy, just had 92 points. It is another steal by the Canucks. He is a legit 12 to $13 million defenseman heading into next season. Absolute steal. Uh, what do they have? I'm like two or three years left on this contract. It was in my top 10 best contracts in the NHL. Great job by the Canucks. And then lastly, Sidney Crosby, $8.7 million. Stick to the basics. When looking at Crosby this season, still had 94 points, still carried the Penguins almost single-handedly into the playoffs at the end of the year. So at $8.7 million, he only has one more year left of this. He's going to need an extension, so it's not one of the best contracts in the NHL. But for next year, $8.7 for a legit top 10, top 10 player for me in the entire NHL. I think he was number 10. That is amazing. No, he's actually number nine, I think. But that is amazing value, and I do not expect Sidney Crosby to fall off a cliff all of a sudden. I think he's going to have around 90-ish points. I think I had him at 87. But if he was on a far better team, he'd probably go for 9,500. The only problem is his wingers are kind of washed up at this point. So when looking at Crosby, he gets a number 10 spot. Throw them all up. Throw up the graphic. Here is the full one through 10. We got Connor Bedard, Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, Evan Bouchard. Then we got Kucherov, Makar, Johnston, Jack Hughes, Quinn Hughes, in Sydney Crosby. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? Who are some guys that I'm missing? Any other ELC guys? Guys like Byfield, Raymond, Jarvis, they have new deals kicking in, so next season they're not going to be on their ELCs. I'm not going to go with like Celebrity and think that he's going to be immediately like 65, 70 points. But let me know in the comments, what do you think about that? I'll be seeing the next one.